Welcome to the Division of Local Services webinar relative to the Community Preservation Act. My name is Jennifer McAllister and I manage training initiatives here at DLF. As many of you know, the DLS promotes sound municipal finance management practices and supports local officials by providing guidance, training, and oversight. Before we get started, I want to remind participants that this webinar will be recorded and posted on the DLS YouTube channel for future reference. Please submit any questions you may have using the chat function on the menu bar, and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. The webinar will be recorded and shared with participants. The PowerPoint presentation will also be shared along with any links referenced in the presentation. Today's presentation will be led by Jared Curtis, Springfield Supervisor from the Bureau of Accounts. And I'll let him take it away. Thank you, Jen. Good morning. As Jen mentioned, my name is Jared Curtis and I'm a supervisor with the Divisional Local Services Bureau of Accounts. Thank you for joining DLS during this presentation on the Community Preservation Act. As Jen mentioned, the goal of the Divisional Local Services is to promote sound municipal financial management practices. DLS supports local officials through guidance, training, and oversight. We currently have five bureaus within the Division of Local Services, the Bureau of Accounts, the Bureau of Local Assessment, the Data Analytics and Resource Bureau, the Financial Management Resource Bureau, and the Bureau of Municipal Finance Law. This webinar will introduce you to the Community Preservation Act, or CPA, and bring you through the acceptance process. Today, we will touch on the Community Preservation Committee responsibilities, discuss eligible expenditures, and talk about the revocation process. The presentation will wrap up with an overview of the Community Preservation Fund through the operation of a fiscal cycle and discuss the Community Preservation Reporting Requirements. The Community Preservation Act was created by Chapter 267 of the Acts of 2000, which is found in the general laws at Chapter 44B. The CPA is a local option that must be adopted by your community to impose an additional property tax surcharge up to 3%. These additional funds provide a revenue source to be appropriated and spent for certain open space, including recreation, historic resources, and community housing purposes. To establish a community preservation fund, a community must accept Chapter 44B, Sections 3 through 7. There are two methods of acceptance, one through Chapter 44B, Section 3B, or through Chapter 44B, Section 3B and a half. Chapter 44B, Section 3B and a half is also known as the blended CPA adoption. I will discuss this in greater detail later in the presentation. Acceptance requires a majority vote of both the community's legislative body and by voters at the next regular municipal or state election. A community that adopts Chapter 44B, Section 3B, must approve a surcharge percentage amount up to 3% of taxes assessed annually on real property. A community that adopts Chapter 44B, Section 3B and a half, the blended CPA, approves a surcharge of at least 1% and can approve annual appropriations of municipal revenues up to 2%. The surcharge and additional revenues appropriated cannot exceed 3%. As an alternative to legislative body approval, a petition may be submitted for placing the acceptance on the ballot. The petition must be signed by at least 5% of the registered voters of the city or town. The petition must state the surcharge percentage and any exemptions to be granted. Voters must approve the proposal by the legislative body or what is contained in the petition. The town clerk or secretary of state must then place the question on the ballot at the next regular municipal or state election. If your community adopts the CPA, the clerk must notify DLS within 30 days of acceptance. To receive matching distributions from the state trust fund, acceptance must be reported no later than September 15th of the fiscal year following the close of the fiscal year the surcharge was first assessed. <laughs> 
In a community that accepts the Community Preservation Act, the surcharge is assessed on the municipality's real estate taxes. Taxes assessed on personal property are not subject to the community preservation surcharge. The surcharge is imposed on every type of real estate tax assessment made by the community. The surcharge must be displayed as a separate item on the tax bills, commitments, and warrants issued for those assessments. The surcharge is calculated by multiplying the real estate tax on the parcel, less any property tax exemptions, by the adopted percentage. There are several local option surcharge exemptions that your community can adopt during the CPA acceptance process. If your community adopts the residential exemption, it applies to the real estate assessed on the first $100,000 in assessed valuation of all properties classified as residential. What this means is that your property would be taxed by the percentage adopted based on its current assessed valuation less $100,000. If your community adopts a commercial industrial exemption, there are two exemptions that can apply to the real estate tax assessed on commercial or industrial properties. The first is a total exemption from the surcharge and applies only in a fiscal year in which your community approves a split tax rate. The second exemption applies to the real estate tax assessed on the first $100,000 in assessed valuation of all properties classified as commercial industrial. This exemption works similar to the residential exemption. The final local option surcharge exemption that can be adopted applies to individuals that qualify for low income or low income seniors. To qualify for this exemption, the individual must meet certain requirements. These requirements are as follows. The individual must own and occupy the property as a primary domicile. The applicant must meet a household annual income standard for the low income exemption to be granted. To qualify as a senior, the applicant must also be 60 or older as of January 1st. If your community adopted the blended CPA under Chapter 44B, Section 3B and a half, in order to qualify for all three rounds of the state trust fund distribution, you must adopt at least a 1% surcharge on the real estate tax levy and appropriate additional municipal revenues to the Community Preservation Fund so that the total equals 3% of the real estate tax levy. Allowable sources of additional municipal revenue include general fund revenues, available funds such as free cash and stabilization, and gifts for community preservation purposes received from private sources. Any state or federal funds received for CPA purposes do not count towards the 3% of the real estate tax levy for state trust fund distribution purposes. There are only five communities that have adopted the blended CPA under Chapter 44B, Section 3B and a half. Appropriation of, addis of additional municipal revenues to the Community Preservation Fund must be voted on by the legislative body. The appropriation must state a fixed dollar amount and be voted before the tax rate is set if appropriating from the general fund. The additional municipal revenues must be voted by June 30th if they are coming from an available fund such as free cash or stabilization. To be eligible for all three rounds of the state matching funds, the community must have appropriated additional sources of revenue to the Community Preservation Fund so that the total funds equal 3% of the real estate tax levy. At any time after adoption of the surcharge, a community may amend its acceptance of the CPA. Amendment is by majority vote of the legislative body and by referendum. If a community has adopted the regular CPA and wishes to appropriate additional municipal revenue to the Community Preservation Fund, they must use the amended acceptance process and adopt the alternative funding provision of the Community Preservation Act. Every community that accepts the CPA must enact a bylaw or ordinance establishing a Community Preservation Committee or a CPC. The bylaw or ordinance must address the following. The composition of the committee, the member selection method by election or appointment, and the term 
the members will serve. In a city, the ordinance must also set forth the mechanisms under which the legislative body may approve or veto community preservation appropriations consistent with the city charter. The CPC must consist of five to nine members and include a designee from each of the following, the Conservation Commission, the Historical Commission, the Planning Board, the Board of Park Commissioners, and the Housing Authority. The CPC is responsible for evaluating the community preservation needs of the community and making recommendations for appropriations from the Community Preservation Fund to the community's legislative body as part of the annual budget process. The CPC should study the community preservation needs of the community and then develop a program and financial plan for the city or town. The program and financial plan should be reviewed and updated annually to reflect changes in the community's needs, priorities, and resources. The CPC's budget should include the community's revenue projections for the fiscal year and identify all appropriations that the committee recommends funding for community preservation fund financing sources. There are four instances when appropriations may be made by the legislative body from the Community Preservation Fund without a prior recommendation of the CPC. Appropriations to an administrative budget of the CPC, provided it is the first year of the CPA's implementation and the CPC has not yet been formed. Appropriations to pay debt service on debt previously voted by the legislative body after a recommendation of the CPC. Upon revocation of the CPA, unless the community's bylaw or ordinance provides that the CPC's recommendation role continues as long as the community preservation funds remain. And finally, in the first year of adoption of the CPA, before the CPC is formed, the legislative body may appropriate community preservation fund annual revenues to an annual budgeted reserve. This would allow the CPC to appropriate funds later in the fiscal year once the committee has been established. CPA appropriations fall into two main categories. First, for the CPC's administrative or operating budget, and second, for all eligible community preservation asset projects. The three community preservation asset categories are open space, including land for recreational use, historic resources, and community housing. The CPC's recommendations should be included in an annual community preservation budget presented as part of the community's annual budget process and should include recommendations for the funding of debt service and any other existing ongoing obligations. Throughout the year, the CPC may make additional recommendations on acquisitions and projects to the extent funds are available to support them. Community preservation funds may be used for the administrative and operating expenses of the CPC. Annual operations for these expenditures may not exceed 5% of the fiscal year's estimated annual fund revenues. Any unspent or unencumbered CPA appropriations remain within the fund and close out on June 30th. CPC administrative expenses are limited to expenses necessary to support the CPC's statutory responsibilities. CPC operating budget eligible expenditures include the following. Clerical support for the CPC, wages or a salary of a person providing direct administrative support services for the CPC, CPC office supplies, newspaper advertisements for CPC hearings, expenses for contractual or consulting services that assist the CPC in making informed spending recommendations, funding for historic resource or affordable housing inventories or historic preservation plans or affordable housing plans. The purpose of this is to assist the CPC in carrying out their duties. Also, the upgrade of tax billing software to implement the necessary changes to incorporate the CPA. This expenditure is only available in the first year of the CPA adoption. The ineligible expenditures from the CPC's administrative budget include the following. 
salaries, wages, benefits, or other indirect costs incurred by other general government departments, such as assessors, accounting officer, treasurer collector, and others. Costs of a study to determine if a particular property is a historic resource. Cost of other studies or assessments in seeking the designation of a historic district. Costs of feasibility studies or appraisals unrelated to the CPC's statutory duties or to a project which is not eligible for funding under the CPA. Contracted services to implement a particular community preservation project approved by the legislative body. Next, I will discuss the community preservation project expenditures. The three community preservation asset categories are open space, including land for recreational use, historic resources, and community housing. In each of the asset categories, community preservation funds may be appropriated for the following projects. Eligible expenditures for open space projects include the following, the acquisition, creation, and preservation of open space, as well as the rehabilitation or restoration of open space, provided the open space was acquired or created with community preservation funds. Open space is defined as land to protect existing and future well fields, aquifers and recharge areas, watershed land, agricultural land, grasslands, fields, forest land, fresh and saltwater marshes, and other wetlands ocean, river, stream, lake, and pond frontage, beaches, dunes, and other coastal lands and land for recreational use. Preservation is defined as protection of personal or real property from injury, harm, or destruction. Open space land for recreational use expenditures include the acquisition, creation, preservation, rehabilitation, and restoration of land for recreational use. Recreational use is defined as active or passive recreational use, including the use of land for community gardens, trails, and non-commercial youth and adult sports, and the use of land as a park, playground, or athletic field. Eligible project expenditures also include the acquisition, preservation, rehabilitation, and restoration of historic resources. Historic resources are defined as a building, structure, document, or artifact that is listed on the state register of historic places or has been determined by the local Historic Preservation Commission to be significant in history, archaeology, architecture, or culture of a city or town. Community housing eligible expenditures include the rehabilitation or restoration of community housing, provided the housing was acquired or created with community preservation funds. Eligible project expenditures also include the acquisition, creation, preservation, and support of community housing. Community housing expenditures also include appropriations to a municipal affordable housing trust fund created by a municipality pursuant to chapter 44, section 55C. Support of community housing is defined as programs that provide grants, loans, rental assistance, security deposits, interest rate write downs, or other forms of assistance directly to individuals and families who are eligible for community housing or to an entity that owns, operates, or manages such housing for the purpose of making housing affordable. Community housing is defined as low and moderate income housing for individuals and families, including low or moderate income senior housing. Low income is defined as housing for those persons and families whose annual income is less than 80% of the area-wide median income. Moderate income is defined as housing for those persons and families whose annual income is less than 100% of the area-wide median income. Rehabilitation is defined as capital improvements or the making of extraordinary repairs to historic resources, open spaces, lands for recreational use, and community housing for the purposes of making such improvements functional for their intended uses. Community preservation fund monies cannot be appropriated for the following purposes. 
to supplant funds being used for existing expenses, even if they serve community preservation purposes. The Community Preservation Fund is a supplementary funding source intended to increase available resources for community preservation acquisitions and initiatives. Community preservation funds cannot be used to pay for the maintenance of any real or personal property. For example, it is not permissible to use CPA funds for a yearly maintenance contract to maintain a slate roof on a historic town building. Community preservation funds cannot be used for the acquisition of artificial turf for athletic fields or for horse or dog racing or the use of land for a stadium, gymnasium, or similar structure. Each fiscal year, upon the recommendation of the CPC, the legislative body must appropriate or reserve for future appropriations at least 10% of the annual fund revenues for projects in each of the three asset categories of open space, including land for recreational use, historic resources, and community housing. The 10% minimum commitment should be based upon a good faith estimate of the annual fund revenues. If it is determined that the annual fund revenues were underestimated by more than a de minimis amount, the CPC should recommend an, appro an additional appropriation by the legislative body to reach the required 10%. The legislative body may make appropriations from or reservations of community preservation funds in the dollar amount recommended by the CPC, or it may reject the recommendations. The legislative body may not increase any recommended appropriation or reservation and it may not change the funding source recommendation of the CPC. The legislative body may not appropriate or reserve any community preservation fund monies on its own initiative without a prior recommendation by the CPC. As we discussed earlier, there are only four instances where the legislative body can appropriate community preservation funds without a CPA recommendation. The Community Preservation Fund is a special revenue fund. The accounting officer must establish and maintain it as a separate account. The following receipts are credited to the Community Preservation Fund. All monies collected from the surcharge, the additional funds from allowable municipal sources appropriated to the Community Preservation Fund by the city or town, all proceeds from borrowings made under the Community Preservation Program, all funds received from the Commonwealth for community preservation purposes, including matching fund distributions from the state trust fund. All funds received from any other source for community preservation purposes. All funds received from proceeds from the disposal of real property and acquired with community preservation funds and all income and interest earned on community preservation monies. A community may appropriate from the estimated annual fund revenues of the Community Preservation Fund for allowable expenditures. Annual fund revenues may also be reserved for future appropriations. For a community that has accepted the regular CPA, the annual fund revenues consist of the receipts from the surcharge, the state trust fund distribution, and interest earned. For a community that accepted the blended CPA, the annual fund revenues consist of the receipts from the surcharge, additional revenues appropriated into the Community Preservation Fund, state trust fund distribution, and interest earned. Communities can appropriate from estimated annual fund revenues until the tax rate is set for the fiscal year. Spending from appropriations from estimated annual fund revenues can commence on July 1st of the fiscal year. Appropriations for allowable community preservation purposes may also be made from other available sources within the fund at any time during the fiscal year. Spending from appropriations from available funds can commence once the appropriation vote is effective. Other funding sources include special purpose revenues from open space, historic resources, and community housing, the Community Preservation Budgeted Reserve set up annually by the legislative body for future appropriation for any CPA lawful purpose within that fiscal year.
the community preservation fund balance, which consists of the unspent and unencumbered balance as of the year end and results from actual collections that exceed expenditures and reservations. Also actual expenditures and encumbrances that are less than appropriations and unspent and unencumbered balances remaining in the annual budgeted reserve. A community preservation trust fund is established on the state level for the benefit of cities and towns participating in the community preservation program. Monies distributed from the state trust fund will come primarily from surcharges on fees charged for recording various documents with the Registry of Deeds or Land Court. The Division of Local Services is responsible for administering and managing disbursements from the trust fund to participating cities and towns. On or before November 15th of each year, distributions will be made from the trust fund to each community that imposed a surcharge for the prior fiscal year. In fiscal year 2024, DLS distributed $49.8 million to 189 CPA communities. The maximum amount that each community can receive in any year from the trust fund is 100% of the total surcharge assessed for the previous fiscal year. Communities that accepted the blended CPA can receive 100% of the total surcharge assessed plus the additional funds appropriated in that fiscal year. Cities and towns may issue general obligation bonds or notes to fund community preservation acquisition and projects subject to general laws, chapter 44, which governs the issuance of municipal debt. Bond proceeds are to be deposited into the community preservation fund. The CPA limits the amount a community may borrow to an amount where the debt service can be paid from the annual community preservation revenues that the community reasonably expects to raise. A community may not borrow to fund a CPA project if the project is not one for which a community is otherwise authorized to borrow. Community preservation funds cannot be used to pay the debt service on borrowings authorized before the CPA was adopted, even if the borrowing was for an allowable community preservation purpose. Once a community authorizes a borrowing, with another financing source for debt service, it cannot amend or change the financing source to a community preservation fund financing source. A community should refrain from borrowing the maximum amount of debt that could be supported by annual revenues because collection rates and administrative expenses will reduce the actual amount available for debt service payments. A recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee and approval of the legislative body by a two-thirds vote is required to authorize the borrowing. Acceptance of the CPA may be revoked, but the community must wait until at least five years after the referendum was passed. Revocation is completed in the same manner as the acceptance. If the CPA was accepted by a majority vote of the legislative body and by referendum, the revocation is meant is by majority vote and referendum. Reducing the CPA surcharge to a de minimis amount is tantamount to a revocation and the procedures for revocation must be followed. Once the CPA has been revoked, the CPA is no longer operational. The community may not issue any new CPA borrowings. At this point, there is no annual 10% minimum spending requirements for open space, historic resources, and community housing. No CPC recommendations are needed for appropriations unless provided by bylaw or ordinance requiring the CPC to do so. Once a community revokes its CPA acceptance, all outstanding obligations, including future debt service payments, must be identified and a determination made whether there are sufficient uncommitted monies available within the fund to meet those obligations. Uncommitted monies include CPA undesignated fund balance, any annual revenues not yet committed or appropriated, and reserve balances that can be used for the purposes of the obligations. If there are sufficient uncommitted monies available within the fund to meet outstanding obligations, the assessment of the surcharge will cease at the end of the fiscal year. <clears throat> 
the funds needed to pay the remaining obligations should be reserved by the accounting officer and the community should not undertake any new obligations. Appropriations from any fund monies remaining after all obligations have been satisfied are restricted to community preservation purposes. When there are not sufficient uncommitted monies available within the fund to meet outstanding obligations, the surcharge must continue to be assessed until sufficient funds become available to pay the remaining obligations. If the surcharge would generate significantly more revenue than needed, the community may amend the surcharge to a percentage that will provide the revenues needed to fund all obligations. As long as the surcharge is imposed, the community will be eligible for a state trust fund distribution match. Now we are going to take a look at the Community Preservation Fund over the operation of a fiscal cycle. The Community Preservation Fund is a special revenue fund that functions in much the same manner as the general fund. In the spring, a budget for the upcoming fiscal year is developed and the legislative body makes appropriations primarily from estimated annual fund revenues. Annual fund revenues are those that the community anticipates receiving during the next fiscal year. Annual fund revenues consist of the local surcharge, state matching funds, interest, and other funds appropriated to the fund. Community preservation appropriations may include those for the CPC administrative budget, new projects, and reservations to a special purpose reserve for open space, historic resources, and community housing. On July 1st, the fiscal year starts and the community may begin spending from appropriations from annual fund revenues, even though the monies have not yet been collected. The CPA fund is not a receipts reserve for appropriation account where appropriations and spending may only be made from actual collections. The setting of each fiscal year's tax rate requires reporting of anticipated revenues from all sources, including the CPA revenues. Just like the general fund and enterprise funds, CPA annual fund revenues are a financing source for appropriations voted until the tax rate is set. After the tax rate is set, a community can only appropriate from borrowing or available funds. CPA available funds consist of the CPA fund balance, the budgeted reserve, the special purpose reserves for open space, historic resources, and community housing, the unexpended and unencumbered appropriation balances, and CPA surplus bond proceeds. Any revenues received during the fiscal year in excess of the estimates budgeted in the tax rate are not available for appropriation until after the close of the fiscal year when they become part of the next fiscal year's fund balance. At the end of the fiscal year, the accounting officer closes the books. Actual expenditures and revenues are compared to those budgeted. Favorable operations will generally result in a positive undesignated fund balance. Excess revenue is closed to the CPA fund balance and can be appropriated until the next June 30th. If there are any prior year revenue or appropriation deficits, they must be covered by the CPA fund, either raised on the tax rate or funded by appropriation from a CPA financing source. During the fiscal year, community preservation communities are required to submit information regarding the community preservation fund annually. The following reports are required to be submitted by communities that adopted the CPA. Form CP1, which is the Community Preservation Surcharge Report. Form CP2, which is the Community Preservation Fund Report. Form CP3, the Community Preservation Initiatives Report. The Tax Rate Recap Schedule A4, the Community Preservation Fund Estimated Revenues and Appropriations and Schedule A, Part 3, Community Preservation Fund, Actual Revenues and Expenditures. Let's take a closer look at the annual reporting requirements. This slide represents a snapshot of the CP1 form. The Community Preservation Surcharge Report, or CP1, must be completed and submitted via DLS Gateway by September 15th of each fiscal year. The CP1 form reports your community's surcharge percentage, total surcharge committed to the collector for the prior fiscal year, 
current and prior year abatements granted, net surcharge, and any additional revenues appropriated to the fund. The CP1 form is the basis for your community's state trust fund match distribution. The Community Preservation Fund Report, or CP2, must be completed and submitted via DLS Gateway by October 31st of each fiscal year. The CP2 form reports your community's actual revenues, expenditures, and fund balances for the prior fiscal year. This slide shows the top section of the CP2, which are the actual revenues from the prior fiscal year. Revenues are broken down by bond proceeds, surcharge collection, state trust fund distribution, investment earnings, gifts or grants, and other. This slide shows the middle section of the CP2 and breaks down the expenditures by asset category, debt service, CPC administrative expenses, and other expenditures. Number eight is looking at expenditures for open space, historic resources, community housing, and recreation. Number nine is looking at debt service expenditures for open space, historic resources, community housing, and recreation. Number 10 reports expenditures for the CPC administrative budget, and number 11 is looking for other expenditures. This slide shows the bottom section of the CP2 form, which reports the detail of the community preservation total fund equity. Lines one and two report fund balance reserves for encumbrances and expenditures. Lines three through five report the fund balance reserves for open space, historic resources, and community housing. These amounts represent revenues that are available for each asset category to be appropriated for future use. Number six reports the fund balance reserve for special purposes, and number seven reports the community preservation funds on designated fund balance. The amount is considered an available fund and can be appropriated for any lawful CPA purpose. The CP3 form or the community preservation inventory database is updated and maintained by the CPC annually. Each community is required to input their completed CPA projects for each fiscal year. This database has a complete listing of all CPA projects completed by each city and town. A username and password are required to access the Community Preservation Inventory Database. The database is maintained by the Community Preservation Coalition. The A4 form is used to report the annual revenues, appropriations, and reservations of the Community Preservation Fund. This form must be completed during the tax rate recap process and is required for communities that accepted the Community Preservation Act. This slide shows the prior fiscal year actual revenues and the current fiscal year's budgeted revenues as recommended by the CPC and approved by the legislative body. This slide shows the middle section of the A4 and portrays a snapshot of the community preservation annual appropriations and reservations. The community appropriated 5.9 million for current year projects, acquisitions, and debt service. They voted a CPC budget of $200,000 and $1.5 million to the various asset category reserves of open space, historic resources, and community housing. This community voted a budgeted reserve in the amount of $3 million. The budgeted reserve is considered an available fund and can be appropriated from until June 30th. The Schedule A is a year-end statement of revenues, other financing sources, expenditures, and other financing uses, and changes to fund balance. Community Preservation Fund information is reported in Part 3, Other Special Revenue. Special revenue funds are used to account for receipts restricted to a particular purpose. This slide shows where community preservation funds are reported on the annual Schedule A. The top section reports revenues and other financing sources. The middle section reports expenditures and other financing uses. And the bottom section reports the beginning fund balance and ending balance for the community preservation fund. 
this community has a community preservation ending fund balance of $245,836. The DLS Municipal Finance Training and Resource Center provides a wide array of interactive and on-demand materials intended to assist local officials. At the conclusion of this webinar, Jen will copy the link to our Training and Resource Center as well as the link to our CPA page into the chat. I recommend that you check them both out for additional information on municipal finance and community preservation related data. I will also copy a link into the chat for the Community Preservation Coalition. The coalition helps communities understand, adopt, and implement the CPA and advocates for the CPA at the state level. They have many great resources available on their website. Thank you all for joining me today to talk about the Community Preservation Fund.